Hi, welcome to the first module of the SEO MBA. We're going to start the whole course here with this idea of good strategy. Now, not everything we do requires strategy and not everything we do is strategic in nature. But when we're talking specifically about getting budget and buy-in for the work that we want to do, doing things like yearly planning, or even uh, pitching an SEO strategy to a client, what we need is more than just a list of things we want to get done. What we need is a strategy. And we need to make that strategy understandable and compelling to the organization. So by the end of this module, hopefully we'll have gone from a list of things that we want to get done to something which is more credible and compelling and looks more like a strategy. Let's dive in. I love the quote from the book, Good Strategy, Bad Strategy. It says a good strategy has three ingredients, a diagnosis, guiding policy, and a set of coherent actions. Now, as SEO professionals, we're very comfortable doing diagnosis. We spend a lot of time here. Things like keyword research, technical audits, competitive analysis. These things are important, but we spend less time actually bringing it together into a strategic frame, giving it a guiding principle and a set of coherent actions. And it's more than just implementation details. Choosing the right coherent actions that ladder up to the guiding principle, this is the punch in the strategy. This is what brings the whole thing together, which is to say that we have a, an idea, which is the guiding principle, and we can bring it to life with reality with the following set of coherent actions. Unfortunately, the SEO industry has been trained in the art of diagnosis. We spend so much time doing diagnosis. The very language of the SEO industry pushes us into audits and analysis, things like keyword research, technical audit, site speed analysis. And where we have ideas, they tend to be weak ideas, things like make the content better or improve the landing pages. And all of this adds up to what I've seen in my experience is just a lack of coherent strategy. We're not creating ideas that ladder down to coherent actions. And we're, not, we're not unable then to sell us into the rest of the business. We can't explain our work convincingly to stakeholders and we lose executive presence, we lose credibility. So choosing a guiding principle is really important, but it's also a bit of an art more than a science. You kind of know it when you see it, but there's a spectrum here that we can look at from things that are only details to things that are only ideas. And it's bad to be on either end of the spectrum. So let's take a look. This is a real slide um, that I've anonymized that you see again and again in the SEO industry. This is just a list of things you want to get done, the output of a technical audit. This is pure details, has no guiding principle, no idea. But at the other end of the spectrum, this is the kind of thing that you might get from an ad agency or a creative agency that has a, a, a compelling visual and a big idea, like we want to become a platform brand, but just lacks any kind of idea of how this will come to life. What is the reality? What is the, the coherent set of actions which is going to enable us to meet this vision? So there's kind of a sweet spot in the middle here where we want both details and ideas. And it's about basically starting with the diagnosis, starting with the analysis, and then choosing a frame, choosing a strategic frame that says of all the things that we could do, how do we narrow our focus and how do we create a guiding principle? So one example that is just above a list of details is something like we want to build an editorial resources center. Now, this is still kind of a list of things we want to get done. This is saying we have a list of content that we want, to, we want to create. And the frame that we're going to create around that is we're going to build an editorial resources center. So this is a way to explain a set of actions, to give a guiding policy uh, that then ladders down to our coherent actions. But it's still kind of still mostly details. Something that has a slightly bigger idea or a slightly bigger strategic frame might be we want to build better pages than our key competitor. Now, this starts to, to give us some strategic uh, weight and to actually have a guiding principle that tells us what to do and what not to do. Things like, how do we define better than competitors? How do we benchmark ourselves against our competitor? What is it that competitors do well? What is our competitor unable to do that we can do because of our strategic uh, positioning? So build better pages than competitor X starts to tell us what to do, what not to do. It starts to give us uh, the, the room to have coherent actions across both things like design, content, building better pages, building more pages. An even bigger idea might be something like, we want to become the best dedicated VPN review site. Now, best does a lot of heavy lifting here. Best really suggests that we need to be better than all of the other players. We need to define what all the other players do. We need to define what best looks like. We might have to put a large amount of investment behind some big bets, do things that no one else in the industry is doing. 
And best here might also encompass things like improving the product pages, but it might also in involve uh, better content, longer content, more content. Again, it might involve doing things that no one has done before. So best is really a big idea, but you can see how this might ladder down to a set of coherent actions that we want to get done. Now, those three ideas choose a guiding principle that come from the diagnosis directive, right? Of all the things that we could do in the diagnosis phase, how do we create a guiding principle that tells us what to do? This idea that says we want to reach our key customer segment X with new landing pages and content strategy. This is basically borrowing a little bit of the guiding principle from the company's strategy. So the bigger, wider company objectives and strategy, we can kind of borrow from to say if customer segment X is important elsewhere in the business, if that has already become a strategic frame that is guiding other teams and other investments, how do we borrow that and, and use that in our strategy to say we are going to use customer segment X as our guiding principle, right? So we're going to reach our customer segment X with new landing pages and a content strategy. Again, this idea allows us to create a coherent set of actions. So let's take a look at another example here. And I want to look at one thing in particular, which is that uh, a guiding principle can actually still encompass a lot of different things that we want to get done. It's about choosing the things that we want to do and choosing the things not to do, but we can still fit a lot of room inside this frame. So let's look at this real example. Uh, the guiding principle says we want to beat a key competitor by leveraging our niche focus to build better product pages and more expert content. So you can see here now we're starting to get a bit richer, uh, a bit more specific with our guiding principle, right? We're starting to, to, to uh, find our strategic advantage, right? Which is that we're going to leverage our niche focus to produce expert content and better product pages. Now within that, we might have a set of coherent actions with three big initiatives. One, improving our product pages. Two, expanding our content with a focus on expertise. And three, building SEO center of excellence. So this is a real example where um, these three initiatives ladder up to the big idea. And you can see that building an SEO center of excellence is not directly tied to the guiding policy, except that it's necessary. In order to invest in all these other things, in order to support these other initiatives, an SEO center of excellence is going to be critically important to our success. So you can already see how uh, things that we might want to do around hiring new headcount in the SEO team or expanding our SEO tooling become uh, important and relevant within the strategic frame. Even more so, in this example, inside improving our product pages, we can actually have a, like a, one, a, a kind of a key initiative, which is fixing our SEO tech debt. Now, I don't want you to just take everything in a technical audit and flip the, flip the script, put a guiding principle at the top, and then shove everything in a laundry list at the bottom. That's not what I'm talking about. But I am saying that a lot of the things that we want to get done that are more technical in nature and, and look more like fixing at the platform level, we can roll up inside a strategic frame. But only where we can justify them as fixing our SEO tech debt is going to improve our product pages. It's going to improve their performance somehow. Right? So again, the idea here is that we can do the things we want to get done, but we still have to create guiding principle. And we have to be able to explain it and sell it into the rest of the business. So when we start to put together a strategy, there's kind of three key ingredients that I'm going to walk through here. We need to take an active strategy. It has to be big enough to care about, and it has to come with a full accounting of what it's going to take. Now, strategy is not about optimizing things. It's not about fixing what we already have. Businesses typically hate to invest at the strategic frame around things that look like optimizations or paying down tech debt. Now, I wish that maintenance and optimizations could be more strategically important, but it's just simply not the case. Businesses like to see something which is more active. Active strategy says we're going to do new things. We're going to create new pages, new content, new page templates. We're going to have new teams or new processes. So we have to sell our ideas in under this idea of being active. We have to create the conditions and capabilities to achieve SEO outcomes. And oftentimes we're stuck not getting the things done that we want to get done because we don't have that in place. We don't have the resources available to us to get them done. So a strategic frame, this is our opportunity to pitch for the resources we need. So things like instead of one-off fix to the site architecture, how do we create a front-end development team that's going to work on SEO initiatives? Instead of uh, one-off fixes to site speed, how do we create site speed to be strategically important so that we can invest on it on an ongoing basis? Or if we're improving keyword targeting on